12 years ago at age 60, in my company's 22nd year, I read Paul Hawkins' book, The Ecology of Commerce. And it changed my life. It changed my view of the world. It came for me at a propitious moment. Our customers, especially interior designers, had begun to ask a question we had not heard before. What's interface doing for the environment? So I had agreed reluctantly, and I underlined reluctantly, to speak to a newly assembled environmental task force of interface people from around the world. I had been asked to offer an environmental vision, and I did not have an environmental vision, and I did not want to address this awkward question. Awkward for me because I could not get beyond we obey the law, comply. <laughs> and somehow I knew that comply was not a vision. <laughs> Hawkins' book changed all of that. It changed everything for me. It landed on my desk at that propitious moment by pure serendipity and without any idea of what it was or even who Paul Hawking was, I started to thumb it. On page 19, I came to an arresting chapter heading, The Death of Birth. Whoa. I began to read. On page 25, I found the full meaning of the chapter heading, and I encountered four terms I had never before read together in one paragraph. Carrying capacity, overshoot, collapse, and extinction. That is, the death of birth, species disappearing never, ever again to experience the miracle of birth. I read, quote, A haunting and off-sighted case of overshoot took place on St. Matthew Island in the Bering Sea in 1944 when 29 reindeer were imported. Specialists had calculated the island could support 13 to 18 reindeer per square mile, a total population between 1,600 and 2,300 animals. By 1957, 13 years later, the population was 1,350. But by 1963, just six more years with no natural controls of predators, the population had exploded to 6,000. The scientists double-checked. The original calculations had been correct. This number vastly exceeded carrying capacity, and sure enough, the population was soon decimated by disease and starvation. Such a drastic overshoot, however, did not lead to restabilization at a lower level with just the extra reindeer dying off. Instead, the entire habitat was so damaged by the overshoot that the number of reindeer fell drastically below the original carrying capacity. And by 1966, just three years later, there were only 42 reindeer left alive on St. Matthew Island. The difference between ruminants and ourselves is that the resources used by the reindeer were grasses, trees, and shrubs, and they eventually return, whereas many of the resources we're exploiting will not." End quote. Reading this for the first time 12 years ago, I knew in my mind and in my heart that it was a metaphor for Earth and humankind. It was an epiphanal moment for me, a spear in the chest that is still there, a life-changing experience. I knew, too, that it was more than a metaphor. It demonstrated a law of nature as immutable and as sure as the law of gravity, the cause and effect relationship between overshoot and collapse. A sidebar, at this moment, humankind is in overshoot using at least 123% of the planet's carrying capacity for us humans, and very probably much more, abusing the web of life, a strand, a node at a time, according to Global Footprint Network, sponsored by World Wildlife Fund. Biodiversity plummets. The human footprint grows, but Earth's carrying capacity does not. In fact, it shrinks. I read on in Hawkins' book, and I was dumbfounded by how much I did not know about the environment and the impacts of the industrial system on the environment, the industrial system of which I and my successful company were an integral part. I surely did not get this in the college at Georgia Tech in the 1950s. 
A new definition of success flooded my consciousness and a latent lurking sense of legacy asserted itself. I got it. I understood for the first time that I was a plunderer of the earth, stealing my grandchildren's future. And that's not the legacy one wants to leave behind. I wept as I read. Hawking made the central point of his book in three parts. One, the living systems, the life support systems of Earth are in decline. We are degrading the biosphere. It is a developing global crisis. Two, the biggest culprit in this decline is the industrial system. This linear take, make, waste, fossil fuel driven abusive system of which we are each and every one a part. And three, the only institution on Earth that is large enough, powerful enough, pervasive enough, wealthy enough, and influential enough to lead humankind out of the mess it's making for itself is the same one that's doing the greatest damage, the institution of business and industry, my institution. And I might add, for most of you, the institution for which you in education are preparing tomorrow's numbers. I took that message to heart. And I made that speech to that tiny task force, and in it I committed our company to the road to sustainability, which today I consider to be its ultimate purpose. I simply said to my people on August 31, 1994, if Hawking is right and business and industry must lead, who will lead business and industry? Unless somebody leads, nobody will. It's a truism. Why not us? And since then, I've been a recovering plunderer. And the 5,000 plus people of Interface are a daily part of that recovery.